Who's your daddy? This gun in my hand. Personally, I'm a big fan of your work, Mr. Ziljan, but the Grotto Club is members only. Unless you have an invitation from a member... I just want to talk with Mr. Legrand. I don't have an invitation. I'm afraid you'll have to defeat me in Greco-Roman wrestling to get in the club. Uh, is there some way I could send a message to Mr. Legrand? I'm just messing with you. Come on in. Just don't shoot anybody with your magic gun. It's not... Don't worry, I won't. My sister! My daughter! My sister! My daughter! My niece! My grandnephew! How hard is it to get cousin from this? I didn't even want to play charades. If I couldn't guess it the first time, what makes you think slapping your hands together in the same gesture over and over would make it clearer? Excuse me, bartender, do you know where I can find Carmine Legrand? He's in the uh, Umberto Eco conference room, right through that door over there. Thanks. Come in. Excuse me, I'm looking for Carmine Legrand. Falk Ziljan, forgive me if I don't stand to shake your hand. I'm not completely bound to this wheelchair, but I'll get shaky if I take a dozen steps. I've been wondering when you'd come around. Then you already knew Emma was in town? What? No, I thought you were lobbying me to publish your adventures in a pulp magazine. Where is Emma? She's in danger. She asked me to help. What kind of danger? What does she need? She didn't tell me details. She said you'd have more information. Mr. Ziljan, I'm afraid you need to be wary of things Emma tells you. She'll lie about anything. I don't know you very well either, Mr. Legrand. It's a he said, she said situation. I have to be skeptical about both of you until I find out more. I'll grant that you have no reason to trust me. Still, you can deduce that Emma has been lying to you. She told you to get more information from me, but I have no idea about her current situation. She didn't fill me in, so I have nothing helpful to pass on to you. Can you think of a reason she would have to lie about this? Perhaps she set you up as bait. She expects something to happen here. Maybe she thinks someone will be drawn out by your appearance. You know anybody in her past who would be gunning for her? I believe she owed Funman when she skipped town. Who's Funman? I'm sorry to put it in stark terms, but I heard she left town at 17 with a traveling salesman. Emma was not seduced by a door-to-door -door salesman. She was seduced by door-to-door -door selling. It was an ad in one of those juvenile delinquent horror comic books. Serve the Lord and you can have these prizes. She sold enough religious wall plaques to earn an aluminum pressure cooker. And who was Funman? It was the company that ran this sales scheme. This town wasn't a big enough market for her ambitions, not enough potential customers, so she caught the bus to Kansas City. After that, I assume she found other products to sell. Or services. She didn't keep in touch after that? I haven't heard from her since she left nine years ago. I hired the best private investigators from the Continental Detective Agency, but they couldn't track her down. Emma told me her younger sister is involved, too. She said the kid is wild and hooked on Mary Jane. That's another lie. Millicent isn't wild. She's just a lesbian, and Emma doesn't approve. I'm afraid she's quite reactionary in some ways. I feel like I've failed Emma as a parent. But there's no reason to judge Millicent harshly. She's perfectly responsible with money and her future. She's going to cosmetology school. The other thing Emma was judgmental about, for a brief period, Millicent earned money recording audio erotica. Is that the thing where you partly hang yourself while, uh... No, audio erotica. Making saucy wire recordings of titillating scenarios. I would have thought high, fluttery voices would be the favorites, but apparently the ones that sell best are husky, almost manly voices trying to sound feminine. Is there a big market for... <clears throat> I mean, is there a big market for that? Whatever else Emma told you, I don't know if Millicent's current girlfriend is named Mary Jane. Mary Jane as in marijuana. Well, again, it matters nothing to me if Millicent is in love with a woman of Hispanic heritage. Love is love. Reefer. The devil's lettuce. Weed. Bud. Herb. I don't follow. Skunk. Asparagus. Sticky icky. Ganja. What are you talking about? Hot. Dope. Tea. Jazz cigarettes. Mr. Ziljan, I don't know if you can understand me right now. I'm calling the doctor. I believe you've experienced a stroke. Your daughter Millicent smokes cannabis. Oh. No, I don't think she smokes anything. Are you sure that's what she meant? Millicent really is a lesbian, so there could conceivably be a Mary Jane or a Juanita or whoever. Forget it. Anyone other than this Funman company who might be looking for Emma? 
She probably owed Fonman four or five dollars, not enough for a decade-long vendetta. Come to think of it, there is someone in Parabellum City who might want revenge on her. His name is Ked Dennity. What's his beef with Emma? He was 12 when Emma started selling plaques door-to-door. -door. They were fierce competitors. Ked was trying to sell enough subscriptions to Grit to earn a fishing tackle box. But Emma made the rounds of the neighborhood early every payday and the first of the month, so most people were tapped out by the time Ked came around. His sister might not have gotten rickets if she'd eaten more fish, which he could have caught with better fishing tackle. He hated Emma for that. He runs a crew of thieves somewhere in the city, but he never stays in one place for long. Arbogast! Yes, Mr. Legrand? Where has Ked Dennity been holed up lately? I overheard someone say he's in something town. I couldn't quite understand the accent. That would have to be either Greek town, Mexican town, Chinatown, or Little Albania. Little Albania doesn't have the word town in it. I don't want to use the slur ending with town that most people call it. Also, one of the nicknames of Parabellum City is P-Town, if that's what they said he could be anywhere in the city. That's disgusting. No, I have higher class of contacts than that. They'd never use that expression. I think we can narrow it down. There's a price on Dennity's head in Little Albania because he always uses a slur for those people. He stays away from Chinatown because he welched on a deal with one of those bosses. Oh, it's okay to use Welsh like that, is it? That will be all, Arbogast. And I know Ked keeps out of Mexican town because their food gives him heartburn. I'd bet you can find him in Greek town. Where exactly would he be in Greek town? It's only four blocks long. You can stand in the middle of it and keep an eye on the whole thing till you spot him. Ked Dennity is impossible to miss. He wears a dark gray suit with a gray hat, white shirt, and black tie. That's not very unique. Well, his face is unmistakable. Once you saw him, you'd never forget. I've never seen him, so that doesn't help me. Oh, well, he has a two-inch long scar on his right cheek. Funny story, he was trying to impersonate this other guy who had a scar, so he cut his own cheek, but he was holding up a picture of the guy next to the mirror when he did it, so he cut himself on the wrong cheek. That's not funny. No, I suppose it's not. Oh, and he wears a yellow and white cockatoo feather in the band of his hat. You think this Ked Dennity would actually want to kill Emma? Yes, he might be dangerous. In fact, he and his crew... Arbogast, what's going on? Where's the old man? Ziljan, you leave through the window. What about you? I've triggered the secret panel behind the fireplace. I can roll out that way. Someone outside is firing through the window. Is that a 44 Magnum under your lap blanket? Yes, it looks like the only way out is through. I'm rolling straight out that door to face them in the bar. I'll go with you. No, save yourself so you can save my girls. Where's that secret panel? Of course, the secret society has to have a secret door leading down a stairway to the cellar. And here we go, a secret laboratory. I wouldn't mind all the tables and equipment and beakers full of pastel-colored liquids, but would it kill you to have a lighted exit sign so I can find my way out of here? A specimen jar with a baby goat? My god, these are human fetuses in jars. If I ever see him again, I'll have to ask Carmine about his collection of pickled punks. I never knew they made jars so large. Emma, what are you doing floating in that giant tube of antifreeze? And where's all your clothes? Get me out of here, you idiot! Volumes of Daddy Issues, episode 28 of This Gun in My Hand, was begat by Rob Northrup. Visit thisgunninmyhand.blogspot.com for credits, show notes, information on how to subscribe, and to buy my books, such as Little Heist in the Big Woods and other revisionist atrocities. Who knows you inside and out? Who was always there for you? Who's always on your mind? Your daddy would be an acceptable answer, but I was thinking more along the lines of This Gun in My Hand. <laughs> <laughs>